Joining us now to review some headlines in today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Mr. Efeni. How are Good you? Good morning, Leia. Yeah. Good, Good morning, morning. Ruben. Let's start with this day newspaper. Emifiele, COVID-19 presents opportunity to transform Nigeria. List post-pandemic measures to rejig economy. Plans 15 trillion takeoff equity for Infraco to partner banks, others on health care intervention. Yes, the governor of the central bank, once again, being visionary, looking forward and uh, seizing the moment of this uh, COVID-19 uh, adversity across the world uh, to project some of the ideas he has always uh, been pushing that Nigeria needs to be self-sufficient, produce more at home, depend less on importation. Mm -hmm. And I think this is quite uh, commendable because uh, while we are so much focused on containing the virus, somebody has now, and in the person of uh, Mifili, to tell us that, look, there's so much life after COVID-19, and we order. must prepare for that. Mm -hmm. The world may change. Yes, it may be far-fetched that globalization, as we know it, may not be the case. But just in case that happens, that everybody is not keeping what they produce, mm -hmm. where will Nigeria be? So I think it's quite a commendable um, gesture by the central bank governor. And the way he puts it, quoting Churchill, we must never let a crisis go to waste. So getting the best out of this situation and well, I think kudos not, to the central bank governor once again. Well, it's not but I agree with you, Ruben, that he should not be acting in silos. This should be part of the mix of uh, yeah. whatever is happening at oh, the presidency perfect. to uh, take care of the economy uh, post-COVID-19. Well, as I said earlier, I said it's a good mm -hmm. opinion piece. It's a good think piece. And it's also uh, good to see the Central Bank of Nigeria thinking ahead. Yeah. Um, most of the things that uh, the uh, uh, CBN governor pointed out in the refractory part of yes. his uh, statement, you know, again, is very uh, sobering. Uh, he, he has tried to expose our vulnerabilities as an import-dependent uh, economy as an economy where there is no productivity, we are even so dependent. We don't have uh, quality and affordable healthcare processes. Yeah. And I drew attention to the specific questions that he raised in one paragraph uh, to, to drive home the extent of our vulnerabilities. And I think that this is an opinion that should be shared widely, particularly uh, in the policy making corridors, for them to realize how serious our uh, situation is. As we deal with the health crisis, we faced an economic yeah. crisis, we faced, we're, we're also looking at the prospect of, an, of a financial crisis, all of which will affect economic growth. In fact, the uh, IMF, uh, mm -hmm. in its uh, World Outlook report, latest one, is saying that the Nigerian economy is not even likely to witness any significant growth mm -hmm. until 2021. And that 2021, uh, 2.4 projected, yes. uh, may even be a bit too optimistic because nobody knows for how long this uh, pandemic will continue to affect global economies. So, yeah. MFLA is right. This uh, pandemic should be a wake-up call for Nigeria, yes. for us to learn the appropriate lessons and to begin to look, look inwards and become more creative about how we run our country. Mm. Now, he has made a number of suggestions. I said these are many of his suggestions are still at the level of... Uh, uh, statements of intention. Yes, I, um, yes. What should be done about housing? What should be done about manufacturing? Uh, about um, the healthcare sector? What should be done about research? Yeah. And uh, research is important. Research and education. So you can hardly fault him on all the points that he has raised. But it's not for us to enjoy it as uh, opinion readers. It's for mm. all of that to be translated into the work of the Economic Sustainability uh, Committee and the Presidential Economic Advisory uh, uh, Committee. Yes. Yeah. Well, perhaps you will agree with those who, who have been saying that. 
<coughs> it may feel it's more or less like. Did you me. cough just now? No. <laughs> you know what's interesting, though? Even. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll make this set for you. I only cleared my, <laughs> my throat. You know, even if you look at Nigeria's trade deficit uh, prior to COVID, I believe it was about what's. 562 trillion or billion naira, sorry, billion naira. Even if you look at that alone, we've had too many suggestions. It is time to look inwards. I'm, I'm glad he's made this call. It's now time to just see the CBN and other bodies acting on it, which I'm sure we will. Yes, the, just the point you were making. Mm -hmm. If you look at the new telegraph, okay. IMF, Nigeria's economy may shrink by 3.4% this year, predicts rebound by 2.4% in 2021 says global growth to fall by 3% in 2020. NLC 6 Nigeria's inclusion in debt relief. Of course, Nigeria was not included mm. among yes. the countries 25 countries that uh, the IMF granted that debt relief. Mm. Well, I think that is another matter altogether whether we should be given debt relief. Well, perhaps because of uh, the projection also that Nigerian economy is likely to rebound in 2021. Yeah, how Which I say maybe a bit on optimistic. the optimistic. optimistic. Yeah. Yes. I mean, even yesterday on the show, uh, Bismarck uh, Rewane was saying, first of all, a recession is inevitable. Now, if we want to look at how bad it's going to be, I think that's a bit optimistic to say we can rebound by 21. I think it's very optimistic. Well, if we look at the Guardian newspaper, and, of course, one sector that this COVID-19 will hit so badly is aviation. But coming down home, how 100 billion Naira tickets reform may cripple travel agencies. Yes, the foreign people are asking for reform because many people have booked their uh, tickets well ahead of the summer and all that. Now, many people are asking for the reform from the foreign airlines who are not uh, having any of that. But travel agencies are in a dilemma mm -hmm. because whereas the airlines are saying they should remit the monies, they have sold by way of tickets. The, those who bought tickets are saying, please refund my money. So they're in a dilemma. And if they were to refund or do either of this, they may be losing as much as 100 billion naira, according to this report. Inevitable. That's the unfortunate truth. It's just inevitable. I mean, well, what are people supposed to do? People are going to want their money back, especially people that have refundable tickets. If your ticket is a non-refundable ticket, then boo-hoo, too bad for you. But people with refundable tickets, unfortunately... Well, every sector is affected. Yeah. Uh, since the uh, travel and tourism sector is on its knees, yeah. then, of course, uh, you know, airlines and travel agencies will be, uh, also will be affected. But the long-term fare is that, look, the most affected sector will probably be the uh, small and medium-scale enterprises. I may not be able uh, to have anything to fall back of, upon. Uh, you know, I may not have shock absorbers. And the net effect of this, either you know, in the travel and tourism industry or elsewhere, is that after COVID-19, you are likely to have an uh, unemployment rate rising heavily because businesses coming up with continuity plans will necessarily need to shed some weight. And that's where the big crisis will be because then we will have on our hands a social crisis, the indications of which we are even already seeing now. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, people complaining that they are hungry, they cannot afford to survive, and government should help. And that's why our government putting measures in place to cushion mm -hmm. all of these effects. Even some of the measures could even include bailouts yeah. for small and medium scale enterprises. Uh, so the thinking process uh, will have to continue because uh, what you have, you know, may not be. Uh, really, really positive for the people. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be tough times all the way. Mm -hmm. But if we look at, let's go to the foreign newspapers. Uh, the Daily Telegraph of the UK, the biggest, biggest economic shock in 300 years. The Office of the Budget Responsibility uh, says Britain will suffer the deepest recession for 300 years if COVID-19 lockdown continues into the summer. Yes, the economy likely to shrink by 35%. Two million uh, could be jobless. Unemployed. And mm -hmm. so it's a very serious uh, the impact in the UK. And of course, you can see the figures there, 93,873 93, affected, 12,107 
deaths. They're literally already. about to join. Who was the last country to pass 15,000 deaths? I believe it was France. And it's interesting. You see countries like the U.S. even optimistic that they're, they're going to reopen their economies in May. And eventually you have that's to reopen. That's Trump saying that. Yeah, that's Trump saying that, you know. Mm. But eventually you do have to reopen your economies. But the health situation still comes yes. first. And looking at the UK's figures, I mean... Uh, no, in fact, the figures are, seem to be underreported. If you look at the Daily Mail, the yeah. Daily Mail newspaper, Very. 400 feared dead in our care homes. 4,000. 4, yes, 4,000 feared dead in our care homes. Shocking virus death toll, hugely underreported, one expert. Mm -hmm. In fact, a number of uh, GPs are reluctant to even write COVID-19 as cause of death in death certificates. Look at the 36-year-old woman in Peckham that passed away, had COVID symptoms for seven days. Her husband kept calling, and they still refused to identify her as a COVID patient. They said her symptoms were not strong enough. Till today, nobody knows if she died from coronavirus. So this is a very apt, um, and I normally don't say that about the Daily Mail, but this is quite well, an The United apt Kingdom is analysis. dealing with uh, a number of challenges, and that was why we brought up the matter with uh, Dr. Lorna Daruchime. Uh, to identify some of these issues. Yes, there is issue with care homes. There are issues also with testing. Yeah. So even as advanced the, as the United Kingdom is, they have challenges. So when we talk about challenges in Nigeria, uh, we're not alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every country around the world is trying to find ways to deal with this uh, tragedy that has come upon the world. But the thing about the economy is, is the same in many other economies. The Office of Budget Responsibility pointed out that, you know, the UK is definitely in a recession. Yeah. Now, the entire world is in a recession. But look at the indications. You said um, about 2 million people would uh, yeah, lose, their jobs. lose their jobs. That's the report from the Times. Another newspaper says that the figure could be as high as about, uh, as about 3.4 million persons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that would be a real crisis because once you have unemployment, you know, you have social crisis, government resources are overstretched. Mm -hmm. And it's the same challenge. They're dealing with in the UK that we're also dealing with here in Nigeria. But as uh, Dr. Rutimi uh, pointed out uh, in his concluding statement, what is important is for countries to prepare, prepare, and prepare. prepare. Yeah. Yes.